this week on the Rouge, White, and Blue. In the land of backup quarterbacks, Davis Alexander is king. Coming up next. Welcome to another episode of the Rouge, White, and Blue CFL podcast. My name's Oz Davis. I'm the co-host of the show. Joining me, as always, is my co-host, Joe Pritchard. Joe, how is it going for you this week? So, I, I guess I wonder how you did it all these years. Watching a team that just couldn't <laughs> quite get to the finish line. Can you explain how, how I need to, need to be handling myself right now? I don't know what to do with my hands. I cannot. I cannot. And here's why. In those years of Alouette's futility, post-Calvio, let's say, the post-Calvio era, the difference is is that you guys still have Lou Gehrig at quarterback, right? Whereas we've had 12 different quarterbacks. That's That's been the futility of the Alouette specifically. Now, what's befuddling about the Bombers this season is that a lot of these are the same guys. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's just not happening on the offense. You know, um, you know if, we, if we want to jump right to the Bombers Argos game, well, let's not, but I'll let's say not. in brief. I, I've there got was thoughts. no there was no problem with the defense. You know, and until uh, what overtime, uh, Sergio Castillo has been awesome. He's been hitting from everywhere. So, you know, it, it's just baffling in the case of the Bombers. You know, yeah, okay. There's a lot of injuries, and their line is down to one guy who started most games last year. So, yes, the offense has a lot of problems, but it's just. There's still a lot of talent here, and I just I just don't understand what's happening. That for me, there are two key words this week. One of them was baffling. Certain teams are baffling, if you can guess who I'm talking about here, uh, <laughs> primarily. Um, and and some of these results were just wild this week. The other uh, word of the week is, of course, sweep, sweep. Do you happen to know, Joe, when the last time in the CFL it was that you had a sweep week? By the East. By the East? God only knows. Yeah. Do you have any idea? No. I did this. I did this the hard way. I went through like all the schedules from previous year. I got to 2015. There was nothing even close. So hopefully by the next episode of the show, I will have figured this out because, Matt, you have to go a ways back to find this. I wonder and the, if and the, I should put the bat signal up and say, hey, anybody know this one? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, please. Uh, if anybody perchance listening to the show or watching the show knows the answer, please tell me. But, wow, I would not be surprised if you had to go back to pre- America CFL, I would guess. 
you probably have to go back to the 90s to find it because man that's the thing i'm looking at i'm looking at all these past seasons in the teens and there's always one eastern team that's a dog <laughs> you know there's one eastern team that's winning three four games a year and nine times out of ten two of those wins are against other eastern teams you know, yeah you go back to the hard. 80s and three teams are like that usually right right and the usa days when you had a bunch of canadian teams that were like having these tremendously losing records these sick records uh so i mean it's it, it was quite a momentous week and and I thought it was nice that each of these games was on the level, right? I mean, basically, each of these teams is playing their equivalent in the other division, more or less. Uh, at the time, Saskatchewan was in first, Montreal was in first, right? You have uh, Ottawa, who was in third. <laughs> uh, I think they're still in third, mathematically. No, um, they're in second. They are in second now. Mm -hmm. Okay, well... You had some two threes going on there, right, with Calgary and and Ottawa and Toronto and Winnipeg. And then you had, you know, the bottom feeders, let's say, uh, in Hamilton versus Edmonton. So it was a fantastic week for the Eastern teams. Really great week for all those teams. Uh, some gutty wins by the teams. Um yeah, I'll try and find that out for next week. When was the when was the last sweep by the East? I might have to go back to the fifties. Uh, okay, so the week started off. Uh, in recapping, the week started off uh, Montreal Alouettes twenty, Riders sixteen. Um, hang on here. This is some great audio here. All right, so um, oh, I wanted to comment on that too. All right, so, um, okay, one of the things that we have to come to grips with at this point in the season is uh, backup quarterbacks. Right? We're 40% of the way through the season. Again, it was a week where there was a lot of backup quarterbacks playing, uh, not a lot of great performances. Scintillating performance in the Alouettes game by... Everybody's here. The, the new Rakeem Cato, <laughs> Davis Alexander, uh, in the same week that Cody Fajardo was announced to be on the sixth game, uh, disabled list. Um, Alexander came in, thankfully, in relief uh, in this game and had a nice game, threw for a couple of touchdowns, got the fans back into the game. Um, but going back to the whole backup quarterback thing. Okay, so Joe likes to say on this show that you're going to use your backup quarterback. And during that time when the backup is starting, uh, you're happy to go two and two. Okay, so after this game, the Alouettes are now one and one with their backups. And uh, the Riders are two and two with Shea Patterson. <laughs> um <laughs> Which of these teams are you happier for at quarterback right now, Joe? Gee, I wonder. <laughs> um, I'm just, honestly, I'm glad Montreal made the move when they did. Because yeah. last week's pick, Saskatchewan over Montreal, in Montreal was predicated on the idea that they would leave Caleb Evans in for the whole game. I, I predicted the first half of that game dead on. Well, yeah. I'm very glad that they made the change because that shows that they're paying attention. They know that they have a problem. They're going to fix that problem. Mm -hmm. You would not believe how many teams I've seen just throw, just keep doing the same wrong thing over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Montreal showing that, hey, we get it. This isn't working. Let's fix it. Right. All for it. Right, right, right. Had to pull the had to pull the goalie there. <laughs> had to pull the quarterback there. Yep, absolutely. Um, nice second half. Of course, we'll find out very soon how much of this is just predicated on what I like to refer to as the lack of game tape 
um, you know, nobody knows what Davis Alexander is capable of. So I'm sure that the writers did not prepare for this game plan, uh, i.e. don't run with the ball at a moment's notice. And, you know, put a little bit more than 20 yards of air underneath the thing once in a while. Um, so nice play by them. Uh, one of the things I took away from this game, of course, I don't think you can avoid noticing it, is just, again, the way that the defense especially is making these second half adjustments is amazing. I mean, again, in the first half, uh, completely spanked in the running game. Frankie Hickson is having a career day of the first half, right, in place of uh, A.J. Olet. Uh, 98 yards in the first half. There, and the, every, uh, some of the folks on TSN were whispering about, like, yeah, records, 200 yards, whatever. Uh-uh. Second half, 19 yards rushing. And that was most of the rushing yards in the entire second half by the Riders. Um, they only allowed the one touchdown uh, in the whole game. And that was at the end of the first quarter. That was basically on their worst play of the game. Uh, Hickson's 20-yarder. Uh, and he just ran that sucker in. Um, in terms of special teams, right? Uh, they they were nice through the whole game, except uh, they were very nice for the whole game. They even got the turnover on Mario Alford, no less. We love Mario Alford in Montreal. All is forgiven. Please come back, Mario. Please. But it was very nice to see how our, our special teams Teams bottled him up uh, just on three attempts, just nine yards, and the fumble recovered. However, <laughs> special teams got a little bit spanked on one of the most obvious uh, field goal blocks I've seen in a long time. You could just see this one unfolding. Brian Cox just destroys the right tackle out there. Uh, Josh Donovan uh, just <laughs> annihilates him and blocks that field goal. However, after that, it's all good. It's all good. 17 to nothing shutout. This this team, especially on the defense, looks unstoppable. Uh, even last week, even last week, defense was really nice. Uh, took the loss, but defense did a nice job through at least the first three quarters of that game. Uh, all we need is, is, is a marginal quarterback out there. Mm -hmm. you know? That's and all that tells you where Caleb Evans is at this point in his career, that he was not the answer there when you don't need a whole lot and you're getting less than that. No, I mean, I mean, again, like <sighs> Caleb, the, the Caleb Evans issue, is just multidimensional. I don't know if this is just bad habits. I don't know if this is just bad decision-making or what, but again, here's a guy who ostensibly his strength is to run the ball. You know how many yards? You know how many yards rushing they had in the first half? Seven, seven. They handed it to Fletcher once for three yards. Evans runs it three times for four yards. Once or twice was a plunge. Another time he tried to make something out of nothing, got nothing. You know, it's just like, wow. So I mean, just I. <laughs> Yeah, just, I don't know, again, I don't know if this is the bad decisions or what. But, you know, Davis Alexander called a good game out there. So, yeah, at least at least this week. So, And, you know, again, I also like this uh, in the second half, time of possession, 18, 18 and a quarter minutes to 11 and three quarter minutes in Montreal's favor. So, again, all we need is somebody decent behind the, Behind the behind the center and uh, Cody, get better soon. He might be. They pulled him off the six game already. Oh, they did. Oh, nice. Yep. All right. Wow, that game. was quick. That was quick. Yep. Uh, so he should be back sooner rather than later, hopefully for you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be nice. I am currently ignoring that telephone call. All right, so. Where are you on the Riders this week? Now, this is another. This was another game that really um, hit home to me. The excellent thing about football is, week to week, the narrative can completely change. You know, especially in the CFL, it can change across the whole league. 
based on like one week, based on one game each. You know? Yeah, I, I don't think. Of, I, yeah, I don't think there's much to. They really shouldn't change your narrative on the Riders right now. They still have a pretty darn good defense. The offense is getting yep. by with a backup. Shea Patterson's not doing anything to blow anybody away, but he's not giving the game away either. Uh, to ask that kind of team to go into Montreal and win, well, it looked plausible in the first half now, didn't it? But that's a tall ask. <laughs> and when Montreal got it moving, it was hard. Once It was too late once they finally got him stopped. But this is a 500 team, right? I mean, I mean, as long as uh, Travis is not in there, um, this is a 500 team, right? They're two yeah, and two. But that's what right? your and, that's what your backup's supposed to do is keep you afloat while your starting quarterback is on the mend. They've done exactly that. Uh, Trevor Harris gets back in there. They can. No. They've got the offense. Back on where they want it, and then you can see where they where they're going to end up. But right now, so far, so good. Everything's still afloat. They didn't have. They aren't juggling backup quarterbacks like they've done the last couple years. Go one and three or zero oh and four on this stretch. So far, so good. Mm-hmm. So I guess they also benefit from the fact that. They're better than the other three teams in the West, right? I mean, they're competing with BC right now. Now, you figure if the Riders go 500 the rest of the way, they might do better. But if they go 500 the rest of the way, that ends them at 11 and 7. Yeah, and that's easily second place in the West this year. Right. It seems like it, doesn't it? Right. So, okay. if not okay. first, but that would take a little bit of doing. Well, somebody's got to win these games. Yeah. I mean, and I would expect I mean, if, BC to be twelve and six, but think stranger things have happened. So eleven yeah. and seven is a very comfortable spot for them to be. Yeah, they could drop that late season game to Hamilton or something like that. Um, right. Okay. So yeah, <laughs> speaking speaking of baffling teams. All right, here we have Ottawa Red Blacks thirty three, Calgary Stampeders six. Okay, so <laughs> I mean, what happened here? What happened here? Okay, last week Jake Meyer is basically the top fantasy quarterback in the league, right? I, I I'm believing that he's a proper quarterback. Okay, this week, <laughs> this week, um, Ottawa is just playing this massive umbrella defense you know just just flooding that middle area with secondary you know dropping back the linebackers and whatnot that here's Meyer right again you know Mr. Accuracy 20 of 27 for 136 yards (laughs) I mean on top of this the stamps had no turnovers right never turned the ball over and had just three penalties for 28 yards. They get smoked 33 to six. It's, what the hell happened, Joe? Can you tell me? I mean, I'm, I'm Ottawa's still. was good. Okay. I think I'm okay. coming around on that. I mean, five and two should tell you something. Yeah, I guess um, I got it. I guess I got to buy it. Yep. Yeah, I at this point I do. Uh, that uh-huh. defense has been pretty steady uh pretty hard to crack so far this season and to play a game like they did against calgary where calgary is hitting the short passes but getting nothing from it yeah that tells you that the defense is playing hard and is playing with discipline they're not making mistakes calgary wasn't able to force the issue and try to make force them into mistakes Calgary yeah. was taking what Ottawa was giving them, and Ottawa was giving them, here, you can catch that ball, but you're not making the first down marker. Right. And Calgary had no answers as to how to f- solve, how to change that 
So yeah, again, which is wild. I mean, again, like like what is going on here in Calgary? How could they not figure out how to move the ball? And it's either a mismatch they... between what Jake Meyer can do and what Dave Dickinson wants to call, or Dave Dickinson okay. not calling a good game. Which okay, after all these years, you'd think you'd think that they they have that figured out, but. Some it's a it's a square peg in a round hole situation there. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah. My, they seem to be asking Mayor to do things, or they aren't able to get Mayor to do things that they need him to do to make that offense successful. Because there's a couple weeks early in the season where the deep balls were starting to get hit, and then nothing. We're back to last year. Yeah, there comes that point. There comes that point where you feel like the coaching staff, maybe the offensive coordinator in some cases, just lose complete. They lose faith in the quarterback. They lose confidence in the quarterback. I mean, yeah, because you know, it's the, so easy to call the short ones and say, okay, right, don't make any mistakes. Our guys are going to break break loose on a couple of these. We'll keep the ball moving. We'll keep the ball out of the other team's hands. Like, I get the game plan. But when the receivers are catching the ball and being tackled immediately, something's got to give. You got them, dude. It, it, and they could be calling the plays where the first couple options are deep and the checkdowns are short. And maybe Mayer doesn't have the confidence to make that throw. Maybe Ottawa's covering that throw too well. But then you got to find a way to get Ottawa out of that shell then. And you've, you've only got so many plays to yeah. do it with. Their literal shell, right? And yet they couldn't do anything with the running game either. Which is no, because then that that makes it so much easier to drop eight nine into coverage. If you can't run right. against that, what are you right. going to be able to run against? Right. That's <laughs> absolutely nuts. The whole offense, at least for this game, was predicated around the short pass. And what I was going to say is, look, um, you know, he aired it out. Meyer aired it out against Winnipeg couple of weeks ago he did he did and then he got picked and he got a knockdown out of it you know so it was like okay let's try Meyer because as Joe Pritchard said on the Roos White and Blue CFL podcast prior to that no one is scared of Jake Meyer right on this long pass and in, in the long game nobody's scared of him nobody's scared of him he tried to air it out a couple of times and guess what the confidence is gone again I don't believe that Meyer lacks confidence. I believe that the coaching staff does. I mean, I saw this in Los Angeles. You know, I saw this. After that Super Bowl that the Ram lost, we totally lost confidence in Jared Goff. They just weren't calling any challenging plays for him anymore. You know, they were calling the, the vanilla play, you know, the bare minimum, you know. And, and I really feel like that's what happened here in Calgary. And by the end of the game, we saw Logan Bonner. Uh, and that's the first time in a long time. Jake Meyer played nearly every minute of all 18 games last year. He had played basically the entire game every week this year. So this is like the first time in a while, maybe ever, that Meyer has been lifted uh, after being the starter. Yeah, once um, they gave him, once they said, you're the guy, bows, bows out. Yeah, it's been him. He was the guy. He was the guy. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so the Red Blacks are good. Joe, is Drew Brown good? Yeah. He is? Okay. Yeah, he's good. I, I'm not going to sit here and say he's top three in the CFL yet. I'm not going to sit here and say that he'll never get there either, though. Like, he's still young. He's only had – he's had less than 10 starts to his name so far. But yep. we're getting very yep. close to number 10 if we're not there yet. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, even the games he lost in Winnipeg were good, good starts. He's had a couple, he came off the bench in Winnipeg a few times and led the team to victory when they oh, yeah. weren't going anywhere. Oh, yeah. So I think yeah. he's proven that he deserves a good long look. And mm -hmm. so far with that, yeah, some games are 480 yards against Edmonton because Edmonton. Some games are a lot less than that. 
<laughs> well, I got another 300 yarder here. Yeah. I mean, that's but, at very least respectable. So, but I, 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 when's the last time out of one won five games? Did they win five games last year? Uh, they were right around five last year. Yeah, I'm going to say, man. like, that's a season's worth of wins so far, and we're not even in. Well, I'm at this point checking my watch. It is still July. <laughs> By the time the show is up, it may not be July where you're at. Uh, most likely, actually. But right now it's July 31st. Uh, <laughs> so they've got five wins before the end of July, which they're usually looking at five wins around October sometime. So mm-hmm. <laughs> I think that's proof positive that things are going a lot better in Ottawa than they have been in a long time. All right, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I need to know this. I need to remember this. Uh, okay. So, Oh, hell. Okay. Hang on just a minute. I'm looking at this. You're going, wait a minute, five and two. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Ottawa is Ottawa was last year four and fourteen. Four and fourteen. They did not win five games. They were four and fourteen, like Edmonton last year. Okay. Yep. Last it's possible year. that they haven't had five wins since 2018. Yeah. 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 Since last. Uh, Grey Cup run. And uh, actually, about two weeks ago, I was ready to proclaim the Tyrell Ochar. And I'm glad I didn't <laughs> because, man, I now see a world where the Red Blacks are playing in the Grey Cup in November. Eminently doable. Eminently doable. And yeah. I really, you win, again. You, you, I, win, you win in November, you're there. I mean, they're going to get to November at this rate. Yeah. Yeah. I'm fearing. I'm fearing, again, I'm fearing that complacency in Montreal. I think maybe we should continue to start Caleb Evans, right? Just so we keep things close, we keep things fresh, you know, like none of this, none of this, we're up by five games, we've got a playoff spot clinched stuff. None of this. Nope, just confirmed it. Ottawa, well, let's see. Let me do a count right now. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. So they've played nine seasons. This is their tenth season because of COVID wiping one out. Right. They've gotten to five wins in exactly five seasons. 2015 <laughs> through 2018. Wow. They haven't been at five wins since 2018. And Drew Brown got them there in seven games. Drew Brown and help, of course. He's not the only thing going on here. At the no. same time, they've had right. Quarterback after quarterback after quarterback after quarterback after quarterback. After quarterback some Spurs. with good with name, good names. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, ever since Trevor Harris left after 2018, mm-hmm. they've had some named quarterbacks in place. Mm-hmm. Drew Brown is five and two. The rest of them, fourteen wins in four seasons. Yeah, I should at this point I should apologize to Trevor Harris for calling him Travis before. I swear to God, it was just a contraction of your name, dude. Sorry about that. Yeah. In any case, um, we were talking about this before the season with regard to the Red Blacks. Is if they have one area of strength, it is in this receiving court. You saw that in this game. Dominic Rhymes. Uh, who do we have here? Dominic Rhymes, Braylon. Uh, Addison, Addison, Justin mm-hmm. Hardy, Jalen a- Acklin, they combined for 20 catches on 23 targets. I mean, and they're all over the field between the four. Uh, Rhymes is your long threat. These other guys, medium, short threats, whatever. Um, just covering everywhere. It's like Brown always has options out there against any defense in this league. Not great for your fantasy team. Because they're in that enviable position of who's going to be the who's going to be the go-to guy this week, right? And so Justin Hardy gives gonna... you enough points every week to feel comfortable, though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I can see that. Just ride Hardy. I could see that. But sometimes Rhymes is going to blow up, right? Sometimes Braylon is going to blow up, right? So... All right. Uh, moving on. Wow. 
another grueling game <laughs> with the Bombers. Toronto Argonauts, 19. Winnipeg Blue Bombers, 14. If you love defense, you love this game. But, Joe, I got to ask you the question that everybody's asking. Why didn't they kick the field goal, dude? I'm going for third and one on that on that every single time. They really? hadn't failed a they hadn't failed a third and one all season. The fact that they failed it there is just a microcosm of their entire season. It seems but like it, you yeah. get that first down, <laughs> right. you could run the clock down and kick the yeah. field goal and win the game. Yep. Yep. That's why that's you do true. that instead of that's now true. the counter argument is Toronto has moved the ball all dang day. Like even if you right. take the field goal with 50 seconds left, are they going to start suddenly start moving the ball with 50 seconds left? Well, I mean, it's the Bombers this season. They probably would have. So really, they were screwed either way. Um, mm-hmm. You were saying you talking about defense. If you love defense, all this. If you love seeing a team give away chance after chance after chance after chance to win a game, you love this game. <laughs> I mean. That well, see again. I, I I'm more pro defense as anti mistake because that was the thing. In the end, it was the mistakes that killed Winnipeg. That was the difference. That was the difference. Look, that mm-hmm. the pick six being the most obvious, right? But the truth is, is that Winnipeg had five turnovers, three fumbles, right? Three fumbles among them. And in that fourth quarter, uh, they had the um, the the turnover that we just discussed. Turnover on downs. That we just discussed. Toronto, one. One turnover, a turnover on downs in the fourth quarter. Right? So, again, the defenses are going head-to-head. Nick Arbuckle, who played most of this game, Joe, 12 of 22 for 87 (laughs) yards. I mean, again, you really don't have confidence in your defense against 134 yards total passing? Yeah. Wow. No. I, wow. I'm still. I'm still. I would defend that decision. All things being equal, that's the argument. If I need, if I can't get one yard to give my team a chance to salt the game away, time wise, because mm-hmm. if I get one yard and I get, I have a ninety percent chance of kicking that field goal from that range. Mm-hmm. One yard for a ninety percent chance to win the game. I'm doing that, right? Because if you kick it, 90% chance of making it still, but you've given the other team just that little bit more of a chance to come back. Yeah, sure, sure. And two minutes is a lot of time in the CFL. Well, even 50, even 50 seconds is like five plays. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that is the argument. The argument is is that, yeah, Winnipeg's been converting these. They got this down to a science, if nothing else. Um, you get to kill the whole clock, basically, um, if you keep it there. Unless you fumble it, right? <laughs> like, as uh, you know, from the Winnipeg side, I would have been fearing that <laughs> had they kept the ball there. Now they're going to fumble it in the last two minutes of the game, right? Throw the game away that way. So, yeah, mistakes killed. Winnipeg, I think, in the no. um, and I finally kind of zeroed in on what is truly ailing the team because okay. I've been worried about the pass rush, I've been worried about the defense, especially after the Calgary game. Uh, I've been worried about hey, Zach, is Zach playing the way he should be? Is the, the receiving core injuries? But Ben Grant wrote an article and he's the Toronto radio analyst. And he also writes for three down. He wrote an article breaking down all the mistakes on the offensive line. And just when you look at that and you yeah. look over how it's been all season, why Zach is making the mistakes he's making, why Zach is short on some throws because he's not able to step into it, it really just comes down to the offensive line isn't producing the way they used to. Oh yeah. Between yep. age, losing two starters to free agency. Yep. Losing Patty Newfeld to injury now. He's on the sixth game. Mm-hmm. Really, what's left? Who is good on that offensive line anymore? Right. I mean, Stanley Bryant's 
well past a date that you'd feel comfortable with, although he's still playing at a decent high. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Liam Dobbs is the first year starter. Right. Chris Kolonkowski was a backup. Uh, took over for Michael Couture when he got hurt. Did well That's enough right. with that with the line at that nice. point that they were able to save some money and let Couture go home to Vancouver. Mm-hmm. But again, he was a backup to a guy that's starting in the league now. Uh, you're on your backup at right guard, your right tackle, left in free agency, and you got and you got a guy that's just not as good in Eric Lofton. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, Jamarcus Hardrick. He's hurt too, but in Saskatchewan, but he was an anchor of the line. So yeah, just too well, many changes, was- too many negative changes on the offensive line over the last couple of years. And it's finally caught up. And that's the difference between six and two and two and six right now. Cause they've been playing ever since the Montreal game. Every single game has been close. Yeah. Every single game is bad. They've had opportunities to win those games. And the skill players get- haven't done their done as well as they have. They're making the mistakes that the other teams have been making for the last five right. years. Right. But like people like to zero in and hey, is Zach done? Is he no? Zach just doesn't have time right now. You give him the time he you give him even half the time he used to have, and we're talking about a completely different story. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, I mean, I mean, we talked about this too in the preseason, the forty percent of the season ago, right? Um, with all the losses that the Bombers took in the off season, with all the departures and retirements and whatnot, the biggest loss in free agency was Hardrick. He was he was the All Pro that they lost in free agency. In this case, to Saskatchewan, and now you're seeing it. Now you're seeing the effects of it, among other things that you just mentioned. Yeah, you're one uh, returning guy from last year at this point is what, 35? Older than uh, that even. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was thinking maybe 36. but Okay, so again, yeah, and, and now you're seeing the results. So I guess, I guess that's it. I guess this is why the skilled players can't perform. Now, and not even that. They're still making mistakes. They're still fumbling oh, yeah. the ball oh, yeah. away in key yeah. situations where they weren't doing that last year. Yep. 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 Then again, Mistake. like you almost, it's almost like, oh, I have the ball. I have one opportunity instead of the two I used to have. And then you try to do too much. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. And half the players on the team are missing. <laughs> so that too. I better create the opportunity. Right. Yeah, okay. and down another so, down three starting receivers now. Lawler, Sean, yeah. Wolitarski. Yeah. And Wolitarski yep. was the anchor. He was like the glue. So I hope they have yeah. Rashid Bailey on speed dial. So <laughs> bring him back as soon as you can. It sounds like this talk's already happening. I'm not an insider. I couldn't tell you how close they are or if they're still going, but I hope to hear that name in what and see that face in Winnipeg again very, very soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, Boy Latarski was Mr. Versatile there. I mean, we remember a few weeks ago, he was playing in the slot <laughs> in that in that one game. I mean, he was he was really an anchor there, as you said. Yeah. Um, and if this okay. is the and if it just collapses this year, who's to say they can't bounce back next year? No, of course. They still have of enough course. talent. Of course. The analogy That's- is not the analogy is not awesome, but uh, if I mean, I could make the comparison to basketball, whereas here you have the Golden State Warriors, right? They win four years out of five. They lose the championship the other year. Then, you know, COVID year, total washout. Don't even make the playoffs, whatever. Next year, win the title. So, <laughs> you know, it's a Winnipeg not doesn't necessarily have to go away, especially with the talent at receiver, but it would be nice to see more of a running game and it would be nice to repair that line i think in this coming off season for sure um in any case okay so currently then toronto with the win is in third place in the east mm-hmm. okay this is a third place team right i mean this is this is where based on what we've seen this season this is where they should be yeah right? 
because their offense hasn't produced enough to help the defense out so far. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I picked them for fourth, so (laughs) that pick isn't looking quite as bad now. Um, No, and there's still plenty of time to catch up. I mean, they've there's already been calls for Chad Kelly to come back and to even start practicing before suspension is up. I mean, side note, gross, but at the same time, I understand where they're coming from, at least oh, in a yeah. uh, on a on the field portion of things. But right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, I was kind of hoping that they would there would be quite as much of an outcry for him. I was hoping for more success from their quarterback so that that was a right. little bit quieter. Right. It would be Chad who. Um yeah. That, yeah. Honestly that that was what I was hoping. Mm-hmm. But I'll tell you what, I'll be shocked. I'll be shocked if Chad Kelly steps in and he's just Mr. CFL stud again. I'll be shocked. I'll be shocked. It's gonna take some time. You know, maybe they'll get hot. Maybe they'll get on the page before the playoffs, scarily enough. Boy, that eastern side of the playoffs could be dangerous this year. I could, there's, there, there might be three decent teams on the eastern side this season. It's and Hamilton's scary. gotten their stuff together, too, finally. Yeah, well, that's – yeah, let's go on to that because here we have Hamilton Tiger Cats 44 Edmonton Elk 28. I hope you had Bo Levy Mitchell in fantasy, folks. And uh, I hope you had the over if you were betting this game because uh, I think they went over. Wow. Interesting game. So I, I, I'm, this is the fourth game of the week, right? You're not expecting much. Um, I'll tell you what. For the first, what, quarter and a half, this game really felt like a slog. I mean, nobody was – getting the ball in the end zone it was seven six and then the blocked punt <laughs> by kobe jones and the the route was on as they say uh seven six was 21 to eight by halftime and then 44 to 16 in the fourth quarter before mercifully trey ford was given the offense and scored a couple of touchdowns Eh, let's be honest, basically in garbage time. Um, and he had to pull Mar- those plays out of the out of wherever he pulls things out of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because, wow, I mean, the Elks, after a while, after probably in about early third quarter, I mean, these Elks were defeated. They were defeated. It's just like, come on. We, we we should be able – I felt like they felt we should be able to beat these guys. We can't beat anybody, you know. And, and it was a case of even more severe than Myers' game this week. It was a case of the quarterback was dragging the team down with him. He was. I mean, he started this game, first drive, six of six, right? After that, four of 14 – you know, for like 37 yards and an interception, right? I mean, this is and an injury, apparently. Oh, for the rest of the half. So, so in comes Trey Ford, and hey, Trey Ford, right? He's the he's the Kamala Harris of Edmonton, right? He's going to save the day, right, Joe? Sure. He's starting next week. Yep, he's starting next week. That, <laughs> that that had to happen or the stadium might have gotten burnt down. Uh, I mean, at this point, there's no way you can't start him. And let's oh. hope he got something out of being behind McLeod Bethel Thompson. Like, I defended that move even up to, like, last week even, bringing him in. It just didn't work. They couldn't win games. So... Mm-hmm. And you could see the difference between the team under the cloud bubble Thompson and when Trey Ford got in the game. There was a spark. There was life in that team again. Mm-hmm. It makes me yeah, question it, it makes me question then if he has that kind of an effect on the team. Instead of seeing 
I guess this is something that's been bothering me for a while now. But we always have the CFM media yelling about, hey, they should start Trey Ford. They should start Trey Ford. Hey, why isn't Trey Ford starting? Trey Ford's great. Let's see him play. What I would love to have answers on is what was keeping him off the field to begin with now? And now you have a head coach that's no longer there. That was the one that was keeping him off right. the field. Right, right. It's time exactly. it's time to get some answers here. It's time to figure out what was keeping what was keeping Trey Ford off the field. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. it it's clearly a trend where last year they went they had invested a lot of money in Taylor Cornelius, let him go to the point of just complete failure. Put in mm-hmm. Ford as a last resort. This year, mm-hmm. same thing. Miguel Beth Thompson gets seven games. Does better, I will say that. They were in a lot more games. But you went to the point where you had no choice but to play Trey Ford again. Yeah. So why does it need to get to that point before he's on the field? There's a reason why. And I I we need we need to know why now. You would say in in the NFL, you would say that, okay, so this must be coming from management, right? This mm-hmm. directive to keep the quarterback in. However, the, the multi-million dollar salaries <laughs> don't exist. And the, you know, the prestige and the importance of the draft isn't as significant in the CFL. So I'm not sure that was it. But look, here's the no, thing. To put, to put it very, very plainly, there was a lack of faith in Trey Ford. Yeah. In Edmonton management yeah. for the yeah. last two seasons. Yeah. The first season, I mean, he's a rookie, right? But like, mm-hmm. come on now. How long? <laughs> like, how long can you show that little faith in a guy that might be your franchise? Right. I mean, I mean, we talked about this. Uh, again, going back to the offseason, we talked about this. Um, the Elks were stunningly quiet in the offseason for a Chris Jones team, except for this Bethel Thompson sign. Bethel Thompson coming out of the USFL where he won the MVP award and da 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 da. Okay, big deal signing. But dude, they picked up this guy a week and a half before the season, two weeks maybe before the season. I mean, and 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 this whole time. Through the season thus far, we've been going, hmm, McLeod Bethel Thompson doesn't seem like he's on the same page as some of these receivers. Well, guess what? He's not. (laughs) He's not. That's the thing. Bethel Thompson is probably an excellent quarterback, but he was shoved in in the system. Chris Jones says he's my guy. You know, he's a stud. He's the USFL MVP. He's a stud. He's been great in the CFL. And, uh, yeah, we're just going to run with him. I mean, I I would have thought that immediately with the new coach, you get the new quarterback. But I guess they had to lose a couple more games first. <laughs> you know, they interviewed coach on the sideline at the end, uh, going into the second half, going, "What are you going to do at quarterback?" Yep, he's staying in. So I'm like, really? Wow, wow. He must have pictures, Joe. Not even, not even that. But it's clear they went, they, they went and got a veteran. I think that was Chris Jones trying to save his job by getting okay. a veteran quarterback in there. Okay. Seeing, uh, seeing if he could help steady the ship. If they start two and four, three and three, there's no heat. There's not that much heat on Chris Jones. Mm-hmm. Oh, and six was too much. <laughs> and he was trying to avoid 0 and 6 and it failed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like I can see okay. it from that perspective, but you did that last year too. Right, 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 right. Exactly, exactly. Yes. Yeah, I remember 2023. These guys at one point, they had six seemingly viable quarterbacks on their preseason roster. You know, who's going to start? Uh, we don't know. Chris Jones is going to pick somebody. And it wasn't Trey Ford. 
I mean, the only reason why the CFL media, Joe, is that is hot for Trey Ford is because he's so exciting. You know, he's and Canadian. interesting. Yeah. And that's yeah. and that's fair because yeah. that's also why we're spending days and days and days talking about Nathan Rourke being a free agent right now. Hmm. Like he's mm-hmm. he will come to the CFL when he does not have NFL options. Once his NFL options go away, then right. talk to me. But every right. time, but the coverage of Nathan Rourke because he's such a good player, because he's Canadian, because he plays quarterback, gets a little bit intense sometimes. It's like <laughs> take take let's take it let's take our let's take it one step at a time here. Let's, it's the same thing even with Chris Trevler. He got his NFL options. Then he came back to the NFL. Mm. Nathan Rourke's going to do the same thing. Now that we don't have Nathan Rourke to talk about for the, at least probably the rest of the season, we're going to be all in on <laughs> Trey Ford. <laughs> and honestly, I hope Trey Ford does exactly what he did last year, injects some life into the franchise. New owner gets announced sometime soon, hopefully. We end the season, maybe not talking about Edmonton playing in November, but talking about Edmonton making the next step, getting off the mat. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, all right. So finally, uh, and just to, and just to and just to piss Josh Smith off, our buddy <laughs> Josh Smith. Yes, we acknowledge that Bo that Bo had a great game. It's sure. unfortunate he's not the storyline this week because he had probably one of his best passing games of his career. Yeah. Yeah. How about it? So, okay. So, um, at this point, do we believe that this is sustainable? Is this the Bo Levy Mitchell we're going to get for the rest of the season? No. He's got good, he's got really good numbers if you look at him. Yep. I mean, numbers yep. don't always tell the whole story, but those look right. like starting caliber quarterback numbers to me. Yeah. Maybe even a yep. little bit more. If yep. you get a little bit of help from that defense, the second half of the season could get quite interesting in the East, especially if Toronto continues to have pains at quarterback. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to sit here and say Hamilton's going to gonna catch Toronto, but it'd be really, really fun if there was at least a race, right? Yeah, but what if they catch Calgary? <laughs> yes. What if we what if we get that Eastern crossover? Oh my god, finally, after all this time, the East crossover. That would I'll tell you what, if you just looked at this week's games, you might believe in the East crossover. <laughs> my God. My God. BC we can't entirely dispose of that idea, can we? No, of course not. Of course not. No, because Hamilton's I mean, all of a sudden. Got a got a winning streak going, so right. And look, Ottawa is clearly not playing over their heads. They're playing on the level they should be playing. Mm-hmm. Toronto, again, we know that this is a work in progress, right? With all the departures they had this offseason. And they're still treading you know, water about what we were expecting. Right. They will be better in the playoffs than they are right now. I expect. I expect them to be better uh in November than in let's say august <laughs> right i just do i think that there's too much talent there there's too much know-how and you know they might have a decent quarterback by the end of the season uh decent on the field <laughs> right uh Fair. okay all right all right let's get into next week's games but we're going to do the obligatory attempt to make a little money for the podcast. So let's talk about our sponsor, Royal Retros at royalretros.com. Uh, when we say retros, we're talking about memorabilia. You can get your ball caps, jerseys, t shirts, long sleeve shirts, hoodies, jackets, and the always scintillating more. Royal Retros has the gear and the paraphernalia representing dozens of teams from defunct leagues like the USFL, the Arena Football League, the World Football League, the XFL, Football Canada, various pro hockey leagues, including the WHA, ABA Basketball, and, of course, 
the majors. And by the majors, they mean, yes, the defunct teams from the American League and the National League, but also Negro League stuff, Pacific Coast League stuff. And I really need to talk to them. I want some Federal League stuff. <laughs> at oh, Royal come on. Red. The St. Louis Brown stuff isn't enough for you? Yeah, the St. Louis Brown stuff is dope. Is dope. And you can't really lose with the Seattle Pilots number 56 jersey either. So, um, yeah, I mean, again, there's a lot of great stuff here. I'm just kidding. Um, actually, doesn't the Arena Football League exist again? Hasn't yeah. it been resurrected again? Yeah. Yeah, so it got resurrected again poorly. Uh, you can ask Tim Capper more about that. He'll tell you. Uh, that it was a rough thing, but they actually got through a season somehow, even though they start, got like probably had like half the teams that they were supposed to start with mm. make it to the end. Mm. It was that kind of thing. Arena football. Oh, Isaac really? I, Isaac Harker, former former writer, played in the played in the championship game, I believe, and did well. Oh, nice. Well, nice. Wow. All right. There's the information. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Arena League football really sells in, in some areas of the U.S. Um, it's such a fun hey. game. I just wish they wouldn't say they'd stop screwing up the finances. Yeah. Yeah. In all incarnations. However, mm -hmm. the logos are great. The gear is great. And I'll tell you, the CFL USA gear they have is fantastic as well. As well as, you know, some defunct uh, uh, CFL teams like the Montreal Concords. A couple of nice Concords things over there at RoyalRetros.com. And best of all, get 10% off anything in the store when you enter the promo code RWB, Rouge, White, and Blue, CFL at checkout. That's RWB, CFL. That's RoyalRetros.com. And 10% off with RWBCFL. It's a great shop. Enjoy sports fans. Right. Let's talk about next week. Um, four games next week. Full slate again. Um, some interesting point spreads here. We, we expect some pretty serious wins, I guess, this week in the CFL. All right. So game number one. <laughs> are you emotionally ready for this one, Joe? BC Lions are four-point favorites at Winnipeg. That's it? They're coming off a bye, and Winnipeg's got a short week. <laughs> and, and Winnipeg has a short roster. <laughs> um, so are you taking BC outright in this game? Absolutely. You like BC? Yeah. Uh, okay. Just with what I put out there. You, it's enough. You you put you put team A versus team B. One team's got a buy coming off a buy. One team's coming off of like four days rest. You're taking team A every day. Mm -hmm. Like the only way I'm budging off of that is if team A happens to be Edmonton right now going into save Montreal. Like it'd have to be that much of a difference for me to even consider taking the team. Um with the short rest against a team that's coming off the bye. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, that may yep. be enough. That may it be also enough. saves me for having to dive too deeply into this matchup. And, you know, <laughs> and, uh, I, I, I'll have three hours of that tomorrow night. I don't need to be thinking about it any further until then. Okay, so here we go. Game two. Montreal, five-point favorites. At Hamilton. Okay, now, at the beginning of the season, <laughs> when the Alouettes, even before, actually, the Alouettes whipped off those first couple of wins against Winnipeg and whatnot, I was looking at this schedule and thinking that they should be, they could even be 6-0 and at this point, right? Could even be 7-0, and right? But... I'm looking at this Hamilton game, and this was the game that I sort of had earmarked as the possible loser here, the possible end to the streak. However, I'm not going to do that. All right? For the purposes of the pick -em, I'm going to stick with my team. I'm going to take the Montreal Alouettes. I don't know if I'm going to bet this one. I know I'm going to be sweating this one out. I think it could be a close game. Uh, Bo, Bo Levy just might tee off. 
on Montreal. But I think that if Montreal loses to Hamilton next season, I have a feeling it's the next one. Okay. I have a feeling it's the next time they meet. So I'm going to go with Montreal as the visitors to win. here. Me too. I'm not feeling that wow. confident okay. in it. But at the same time, we're talking about a first-place team against still a last-place team. I mean, in Montreal's getting Cody Fajardo back soon. So you're not going to see a ton of Davis Alexander. You can kind of open up the playbook a little bit for him if you had something in the back of your mind. You're not going to have to wait for two or three weeks down the line when he's still starting for you if Cody's already off the injured list. Uh-huh. 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 Yeah, but we're not seeing Fajardo in this game. Probably not, I wouldn't say. <laughs> but he's already off the injured list, so that helps. Wow. Sweet. Oh, man. You're making me so happy, Joe. All right. It's this early in the morning. Okay. All right. So here's another interesting one. Trey Ford at the Edmonton Elks. Five and a half point underdogs at Saskatchewan. Okay. Not exactly a defense I'd want to be facing in my first start of the season. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, what about that? Especially since Saskatchewan has really been known this year for the rushing defense. Right now, they haven't really faced a running threat like Trey Ford could potentially be. So that's going to be a scintillating matchup. But if I see the Riders beat down Trey a couple of times in the first quarter, yeah, <laughs> suddenly I like the Riders by a couple of digits here. Um, I don't know. What do you, do you like the Riders here? You think yeah, the Riders win this game? Yeah. No. Yeah. I think okay. they're sorry, Edmonton. Sorry. Yeah. Misery the Edmonton did. Fords are going to need another week to get ready. Okay. Uh, I just okay. think the Riders defense is too stout to give up too many of the big plays Trey Ford needs because Trey Ford needs to make the plays on the scramble get the defenders out of position and throw a dart. That's how he makes a ton of his plays or find a running lane as he's looking for a receiver downfield. That's how he makes his big plays. He, this is not going to be a normal quarterback drops back offense where he drops back one, two, three reads. It's going to be, if you're, if you think about the NCAA way back when, Johnny Manziel, where he'd make the crazy plays all the time. That's the kind of thing Trey Ford's going to be doing because that's what that's where his success comes from. If the Riders can keep him in the pocket or just make the make the scramble play, keep the scramble plays to a minimum, they're going to walk away with this one pretty easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as they don't let him escape. Right. That's that's the key. Don't let him get to that yeah, second. That's level. not an easy thing to do. Of course. But of course. with a Corey Mace led defense, yeah. they're gonna have a plan for it. Do they execute the plan? Chances are with what I've seen so far, yes. Yep. 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 Yeah, and again, this is one of the best running defenses in the league. Um, I was just looking at next I, I know we're supposed to take these games one game at a time, but uh I was looking at next week and wow, so Edmonton gets BC next week. And I'm afraid that I guess, I guess that Cody Fajardo will not be back next week because, yeah, that's what I thought is that in week 10, we're hosting the Ticats. And that's the game we're going to lose. So, okay. So uh, I hope that means that Cody is not back next week. Okay. And finally, we're ending the week with, and wow, this. This point spread is a real head scratcher. Toronto are four point underdogs at Calgary. Kind of not getting this one, right? After the defensive week that Toronto had and the offensive week that Calgary had. I don't sure, think but it, but Toronto's offense also has to execute and score points. Yeah. They haven't yeah. done that lately either. Yeah. So you're yeah. basically getting the three points for being at home, plus like it's 50-50 at that point from there. Uh-huh. 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 
I I don't know. I'm off of Calgary. I'm off of Calgary right now. They they upset me so much last week that uh, I think I'm going to go with Toronto in the Pickham game here. Uh, yeah, this will probably be uh, – this one won't be a barn burner. This one will probably look a lot like – I expect this one to look a lot like the combination of, you know, again, last week's games. I think – Toronto is going to hold Calgary to very low point totals here. I think that their secondary is good enough to stop that, you know, short pass before it goes anywhere. I mean, again, last week, Meyer had like 136 yards passing and something like 28 was yards after the catch. They're just like stifling this dude. And, and I can't believe that Toronto defense can't do this after what they did to Winnipeg last week. So I think real low scoring game here, but I'll go Toronto. And I'll agree with all of your points, except I'll say Calgary wins because it, in a field goal <laughs> kicking competition, I'm not going to bet against Rene Paredes. Yeah. Yeah. And plus Calgary is just maddening to bet. Weren't you, the, uh-huh. weren't you the one that was saying you can't get a bead on these guys? Uh-huh. Exactly. Yeah. <sighs> wow. Yep. This is the one. There's always one team. That makes CFL pick them miserable. And this year, this year it's definitely Calgary. I, I may have picked that. Be- no, I think I picked Edmonton as that team at the beginning of the year. Uh, but nope, nope, Calgary, Calgary. They're making me crazy this season. All right. So uh, let's wrap this episode of The Rouge, White, and Blue. Do you have any last words of wisdom, Joe? I love doing this to you. <laughs> Uh, if you're going to have a low scoring fantasy okay. week, okay. just hope your opponent has a worse week than you do. <laughs> you're telling me this now? Yeah, Jesus. there's a re- there's a reason I'm six and two. I so far after the first couple of weeks, like yep. I've been able when I have low weeks, my opponent has lower. <laughs> and I've been the opposite. I'm the guy that's going lower. <laughs> yeah, you're four and four. Game. You're you're in it. You're in the thick of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm the. Uh, yeah. I'm that third team in the East right now. So, all right. In any case, hey, good luck to really seriously. Good luck to CFL fantasy players out there. And uh, we will talk to you next week for my co-host Joe Pritchard. I'm Oz Davis. Enjoy the games. Thank you.